What's going on guys, it's Red Bull Tanker and welcome to another video on uh, Operation Unthinkable. So today we'll go over um, some of the advanced rules for this game that you can play or that you can use while playing the game. First one is um, out of supply and what out of supply means is that if you have a territory that is completely surrounded by your enemy, the forces that are trapped inside that territory have a minus one attack and defense. So a good one to point out could be say, the allies were to take Stettin and Breslau, that would mean Berlin would be put out of supply and the forces there would hit on a mine, well, would have a mine, well, their attack and defenses would be um, dropped. So if, instead of defending on a two, infantry defend on a one, so on and so forth as you go down the line. Uh, let's see here next. Um, well, I guess ran, uh, they say random advan random events are part of the advanced rules, but it more. But I mean, when you kind of look at their sequence of uh, their turn sequences, timeline event. Well, yeah, I guess the random event is technically optional. You don't have to play with the random event if you don't want to. Um, but so you got your random event, which again is down here. I'm going to try and get it where the glare isn't there. But so how this chart works is that so the first six turns you play on the top, you roll for the top row. And then uh, turns of 7 to 12, you, roll, you play down here. Now, say you were to roll a 5 on turn 8, and then say on turn 8 you rolled a 5 again, you'll have, you can go up to, you can go up here and see if the 5 up here was rolled. And if it wasn't, you, this random event activates. However, if this 5 was also used, then you will uh, re-roll the events. Um, some of these events, um, they can go either way. Some of them favor the Allies, some favor the Soviets, and some are kind of a neutral and they affect both sides of the game um so uh crap i can't get that glare out of the way i'm sorry well let's do that so this is just kind of an overall look if you think you can uh pause the frame and kind of read some of them um you're uh you're more than welcome to um let's see here next let's see random events so then, um, let's see here. That's pretty much it. Now, um, one thing, where does it start? Okay, so there's another way to also play this game, which is called simultaneous, which basically means that the entire game you play, both sides take their turns at the same time. It's not, you know, you'll do the timeline event, you'll do the random event, you'll do purchases, and repair but instead of doing an initiative roll both sides just go and i'm still a little unclear with some of this this is a very um this is a very tedious set of rules but basically to play simultaneous like you have to explicit both sides have to explicitly write out their moves who's going who's attacking where who is non-combating where where a strategic bombing raid is going to happen, so on and so forth. Like, it gets it gets pretty complicated as you um, go further along because there's um, phraseologies for certain, um, certain kind of attacks. There's uh, meeting engagements in which both forces are attacking into the same territory together. And from there, um, let's see here. Yeah, there's a mean engagement where both sides are attacking into a territory. You have offensive where only one side is attacking into a territory where the other side is defending from. Um, you can also non-combat units into a defensive space. So say you have a territory that's being attacked and one of your moves is to reinforce that territory. The units that are reinforcing that territory can actually join the defense of that territory for combat like and then 
basically after that then everyone does the remain of uh, the their remaining non-combat any strategic rail or strategic sea movements placing units and then getting paid out simul is something that one day i hope to try um like i said it it is a uh, it is a little complicated um because you have because uh I feel like you'd ha you need to be very seasoned with this game to really um, to really uh, to really give it a go, and it's better, especially for like say on a um, especially if you're gonna play through like a YouTube war or like through Discord or even Facebook Messenger. It's gonna be very hard to play simul that way. I mean. I talked it over with one of my friends and it's like you could but then at the same time you'd also have to commit a good part of your day to um uh, video chats so that way um that way both players are together talking at the same time as who's ever hosting the game is actually making the moves unless you both are playing on the same map or as or if you both have the game then you can kind of um you know, still be on a call with each other and doing the moves and talking to each other as um, as it kind of goes. And then I think the last... So then the last little thing for optional is a different way to win the game, which is through uh, national morale, which is actually um, this chart right here. So there's national morale. So everyone starts here at the start. And then as the game goes on, um, you can you add and subtract to the national morale. Um, so like for um, for NATO, each terror, each new NATO country that comes in adds a plus one to the morale. Um, I think it's uh, and then every time you lose or capture, if you lose a full country, which is all the rondels for that country are taken, you lose them. If you capture an entire country, you go up one. Um, if your if your faction is hit by a nuke, like an atomic bomb is dropped on your faction, you get minus one, and eventually you'll get to a point that once you get to, um, I think it's like once someone has minus. Um, what is it? Yeah, so if someone has minus five morale points after two consecutive turns, then the game is over. And it doesn't matter about the 12, um, the, the major minor objectives. I think if you play with national, like, you can still play, I think you still play with the objectives, but the national morale is just something else, and is something that can help speed up the game as well in the event that someone gets good enough rolls that they're getting into the that they're causing their enemy to get into the minuses so yeah i think that is pretty much it for the sort of advanced rules yeah that's it for the advanced rules and so i think that's pretty much it going through the rule book um so maybe stick around guys. Like I said, I'm thinking I might do, now that I have a better grasp after three turns of playing this game, I might try and do a solo match just to see, just to kind of work it out. Cause I'm also, I'm also, um, I'm also going through the idea of um, doing like a small update with the game. Just adding like one or two, like one or two rules, maybe get rid of a few. Um, like one thing I'm thinking about adding is a you have your you have strategic rail, strategic C. I'm also thinking about like a strategic airlift where each faction can airlift infantry from one airbase to another. I mean that would be a pretty small feat. It'd probably only be like two units or something like that. Um one thing I'm thinking about getting rid of is that you you can you can deploy at captured factories after you've held them for a full turn. Um, also, getting rid of the whole uh, s destroyers don't affect submarines. I'm thinking about getting rid of that. But those are just ideas that I have in my head. But I still want to, like... Like I said, I'll probably try and do, like, a solo match just to still get the 
really reinforce the basics of the game before I actually like start um, meddling with uh, one or two things. So that's it for now. I hope you guys will stick around um, for my solo play. So until next time, as always, guys, take care.